So hey, Rebistro here. A quick channel update before I start tearing into this game. First of all, we're 300 subs a while back. I forgot to mention it at the time because it was in the middle of a slump in viewer figures. As such, a quick thanks to the Patreons and anyone providing any feedback at this time whilst my channel is struggling somewhat. Interactions all help. You are, aside from enjoying making videos, the biggest motivation to continue at this time. Thanks a bunch. Excelsior. The colonists think settlers having a baby with Anno conceived on a Wally the Robot bedsheet. So if you like building paths and roads but can't fit in the part-time course in town management required for proficiently playing Anno, if you enjoy path-based village games but worry about the sanity of your organic minions and feel more comfortable inflicting an existence of manual labour on cute little robots, or if like me you literally killed an Amiga 500 by playing settlers too much, then this is the game for you, with some incoming caveats. But wait! First, some caveats to those caveats. At the time of writing this, there was no multiplayer and no sandbox. Midway through writing this, they released a very basic sandbox and announced incoming multiplayer. I can't speak to the quality of either of these modes in their final iterations, but you know, they are incoming. The Colonists rides the same bus as Anno or Masters of Olympus with a competent and rewarding economic system that requires efficient and evolving transport networks allowing for optimised distribution of goods from source to consumption. Three tiers of house require your standard increasing complexity of resources to fulfil the needs of your residents, but there is no need for sprawling cities as your population expands per your need. Your houses are more like power stations here. Keep your robot's houses stocked with goods and food and they will produce energy. This energy is used to power your economic buildings with a system that works in-game better than it makes sense when thought about for too long. Assuming you took sufficient care with your transport network to allow for a smooth supply of good and distribution of finished material, you will find yourself running an efficient little robot empire. Fail to take sufficient care and you will have a gridlock network unable to provide even the most basic need of your mechanical serfs, with roads clogged with exclaiming automatons. The game is focused on the campaign, but the campaign is split into a military and an economic focused path, allowing you to choose what sort of experience you wish to have. The military in this game is focused on building and maintaining artillery towers. These towers will bombard your neighbour's towers damaging them slowly and eventually destroying them. Once destroyed, you can capture them by building a road, after which the repairs begin. Even the combat is tied to your economy and your infrastructure's ability to supply information to your towers while repairing the damage inflicted to your own. This system might seem basic, but I think it works perfectly for the game. The only units directly controlled by the player are your ships, and even then, only when exploring the map. I'm 32 hours in and halfway through the military and economic campaigns. A mild complaint is that after completing the objectives, there isn't much to aim for. Aside from personal goals you set yourself, which for me involves spanning monuments. Originally when I played this game I saw no sandbox and no multiplayer and I was irked. After spending a short time playing the game I knew with or without the sandbox and multiplayer I was going to give this game a positive review. I then proceeded to play 32 hours of the campaign just to make sure. This game makes an Anno-like experience accessible to everyone, with sprawling networks connected by rail, sea, path and road, with goods automatically routed via the most direct path, with little need for micromanagement on account of the robustness of the system. Should you feel the need, every goods priority and every point on your road network can be tuned to your personal tastes. With all of the settings beneath the hood, a more power user of the genre might require. This game represents a great first taste of deeper town building games like Anno for anyone previously intimidated by the genre. Or, for the regulars, a nice taste of something different whilst waiting for Anno 1800 to get made. This is one of my more polarised reviews, with my only complaints regarding the sandbox and multiplayer being resolved in the future. For 20 quid, I don't think you can go far wrong for the amount of gameplay this game offers at present, or will continue to offer once the new modes are in place. So yeah, buy this game, if you like this sort of a thing. Thanks for watching!